Okay, so we're starting our unit on trig identities and basically you you know some identities already but you don't really know that you do. Um, an identity is just something that's true for all variables um, like, like this formula a squared minus b squared I could rewrite as a plus b and a minus b. That's, that's an identity because it's true. So let's talk about the identities you actually already know. Well, it all goes back to this. This should seem very familiar as we've done. This is x, this is y, and this is theta. And of course, if r is 1, we know what was, what was sine in terms of x, y, and 1. Sine is y, cosine is x, tangent is y over x, cosecant is the flip of y, secant is the flip of x, and this is x over y. Now let's just put those in terms of trig, shall we? So what we have in terms of trig, and I'll, I'll go to the Pythagorean in just a minute, the reciprocal identities are really just involve these. Let's do it in terms of trig. We know that cosecant of theta is equal to 1 over sine of theta. That's an identity. Now, I'm thinking you should know that identity, right? And then secant of theta, and I bet you could fill in the right side, is 1 over cosine of theta. And cotangent of theta is equal to 1 over tangent theta. Sorry, a little extra T there. 1 over tangent of theta. Now, I could also write that sine is equal to 1 over cosecant. I could do that for each one as, as well. Having cosecant in the bottom is like having sine in the top. So I could do that as well. But um, most of these, again, you can rearrange a lot of these. But you, it's not like you have to memorize them, them separately. Uh, so you have 1 over secant, and you have tangent is 1 over cotangent. And even further with those, so what does that mean? Here's what I mean about, about uh, rewriting. Let me just take this top one. If this is an equality, wouldn't it also be true that the cosecant of theta times the sine of theta is equal to 1? Because doesn't that make sense? If, if two things are reciprocals of each other, when you multiply them together, you get 1. So secant times cosecant would be, uh, sorry, secant times cosine would be equal to 1, etc. So these reciprocal identities, I think you already are aware of. Now ratio identities come from this guy. Let's write tangent in terms of trig functions. Instead of saying y over x, wouldn't it be true that tangent is sine over cosine? And once again, I think you actually already know that. And what would cotangent be? Cotangent is cosine over sine. Perfect. So there are, you know, one, two, three, four, five identities that you actually already know. Um, and with these, let's, we'll go ahead and write the Pythagorean theorem here. I'll, I won't use it just yet, but notice in this triangle, I could write x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, but r is 1, so I could write that down. I'll use that when we go to the next page. So let's do that. I'll come, I'll come back to this. I'll just write that down right here, and then we'll, we'll come back to that. So with all those identities, remember I could also square them. So I could square, if I square both sides, now remember the notation. I can write that when the, and you need to write things. Notation is very, very important. The squared goes in between the trig word and the theta. That means tangent of theta squared, it looks like this. Well, when you square a fraction, remember you square the top and also square the bottom. So I could write lots and lots of other identities. I won't do all of the ones we did, 
but I certainly could write a ton more identities with squared. Now 1 squared is of course 1, so I would have that. So, but again, though you don't have to memorize, you already have them memorized, you just add squares to them. So let's look at the Pythagorean identities. Well, from that triangle we said x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. Well, let's do that with trig. Cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. That is a main identity. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter which way you write it, okay, with addition. So, sine squared plus co, you know that this is the same thing, okay? So, you have that. Now, there's actually three main Pythagorean identities, and I'm going to show you how we get them. I'll write the, those in pink. Well, and again, you're like, well, how would I know to do this? You, you really don't. But... If I divide everything by cosine squared, because that sounds like fun, what would that be? Well, cosine squared divided by cosine squared is 1. Sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared. And then 1 over cosine squared is secant squared. Now let's get our third one. Well, let me go back to the original. Instead of dividing by cosine squared, Let's divide through by sine squared. And remember with addition, I can do in any order. So I'm actually going to write this one first. That would be 1 plus what is cosine squared over sine squared? That's cotangent squared. And that would be equal to cosecant squared. Now, it's very important that you understand with all of these three main Pythagorean identities, friends, they have to be squared. So, like, this is not true. If I did 1 plus tangent of theta, that does not equal secant of theta. That is not true. So, those Pythagorean identities have to have uh, the squares. Now there are little cute phrases that helps you remember these and you can write it down if you'd like because you have to memorize them. Um, sin cost a dollar. I don't know. Um, I tan in a second and then I cut crescent rolls. So if that helps you memorize those that's fine um, but you have to get those three in your little noggin. Now here's the funny thing, although those are the main three, you have to know that any form, any rearrangement you can also do because here's what it comes down to. Like if you see one minus cosine squared in a problem, well, you have to understand that one minus cosine squared, if you pop that, this cosine squared to the other side and subtract, and you have one minus cosine squared, what would that be equal to? Well, that would be equal to sine squared. So just by rearranging, y'all, I could write a ton more identities down. I could say that 1 minus sine squared, if I got 1 minus sine squared on one side, what would be on the other side? Cosine squared. Okay. Um, so there's just, there's a lot that I could do. I could go the other way. I could go cosine squared minus 1, and that would be equal to negative sine squared. And so I could keep going and going. So let's see if you can, you know, stop the video and see if you can write a couple of identities underneath each one and then come back and, and see if you got them. So again, all I'm doing is rearranging. So secant squared minus tangent squared would be equal to 1. So if that's true, then tangent squared minus secant squared would be equal to negative 1. Um, I could rearrange and do 1 minus secant squared, what would that be? Well, if I popped that over there, then that would be negative tangent squared, wouldn't it? Okay, so secant squared minus 1 would be equal to tangent squared. So I'm not writing all the ones that are possible, I'm just doing the ones that kind of come to my mind. You could have possibly written some more. And then finally this guy, let's see, cosecant squared minus cotangent squared would be equal to 1. 
cosecant squared minus 1 would be equal to cotangent squared, and on and on and on. Okay, so here's the thing. We actually haven't done any problems yet. We just have to know all those and let's and then to use them. So here are the basic egg trig identities. I'm just rewriting them. The reciprocal ones I think you already know. So those you should already have. I think the tangent one, I mean the uh, ratio ones you actually already know as well. So there's really only three new ones today. And those are your Pythagorean. So let's do them again. Sin costs a dollar. I can tan in a second. And I cut crescent rolls. So those are my eight. Now we're going to use the eight today to do something calling simplify. So basically it says simplify each of the following to a single trig function or number. So I got to get a single trig function or a single number. Now I cannot tell you how important it is for your, you to write neatly because when we get into the verifying, y'all, I have to grade your handwriting. I have to read it. And so if I can't read it, it's just going to be wrong. So get in the habit of working vertically, working down and showing all your work and um, watching your algebraic steps. So here's, here's what we're going to do. Well, the only thing I, I know to do one kind of step is let's get everything in terms of sine and cosine. What is cotangent? Cotangent, I'm going to replace, that's cosine over sine, right? Now algebraically speaking, remember when you multiply fractions, if you have the same thing on top and bottom, those can cancel, and what do I get down to? I get down to cosine. Perfect. Let's look at this next one. Let's see, sine squared over cosine times, what is cosecant? Cosecant is 1 over sine. So what can I do now? Well, I've got sine squared, so I can, I can cancel out one of those signs. So what am I left with? I'm left with sine over cosine. And what is sine over cosine? That is tangent. So you got to have, again, this unit is, is algebra skills and memorization, really, is what it comes down to. So notice what I did there is I, you know, got everything in terms of sine and cosine. Sometimes that's a, a good first step. Let's see. And here's the thing that you need to know with these. That's not the only way to do problems. There's not just one correct way. And that's what's difficult is there's there might be more than one way to do it. And so you just, you know, have to kind of figure it out. Now, here's the thing with number three. I personally would not necessarily change everything to sine and cosine at this point. I mean, you can, but what do you notice right here? And you don't, maybe don't have it memorized just yet, but that should stick out to you very, very, you know, when you have them memorized, that would kind of stick out to you. So that is an identity. So I could replace that whole thing with sine squared. 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared. So I did a replacing. Then what do I get? Well, now I would change everything to sine and cosine so that I can, again, when I multiply, notice I get down to 1. A lot of times people just kind of don't know where to start. The other thing, you know, you ask yourself is what is there to do mathematically? You know, if I had x and x plus 5 and I said, okay, mess with that. Do something mathematically. What would you say? You'd say, well, I could distribute and make that x squared plus 5x. Okay, well, it's just you're doing the same thing, you're just doing it with trig. So let's multiply these two things together. 
So what do you get when you do sine times cosecant? They're reciprocals, so what do you get? You get 1 minus, what is sine times sine? Sine squared. What is that? Hopefully you recognize that will be cosine squared. Okay. So let's try, let's try the last one, last couple here. What do we see to do? Again, there's more than one way to do it. Um, so you can change everything to sine and cosine. That's probably not what I would do in this one. So I'm just kind of trying to give you all the, I think number five is actually the hardest one <laughs> um, of, of the notes. So let's let's see what we have. So let me let me suggest this. This is one plus cosecant. Is there a way to get cotangent squared to have cosecants in it? But remember the identity. And if you forget the identity, I cut crescent rolls. You write the main one and then you rearrange it. So what would cotangent squared be equal to? I could replace that with cosecant squared minus 1. And that's over. I'm going to write, uh, doesn't matter which order I write them in, it's addition. So 1 plus cosecant of theta. And then plus, now what is this? Well, we did that one in the last problem. Sine times cosecant, that's going to be 1. Now I could still go two different routes here. I could get a common denominator, I could, and then add them all together. I could do it that way. But I, I want to show you something else. Where people go wrong is they cancel things that they cannot. Friends, you cannot do this. Okay? If there is an addition and subtraction, you can't, it's like you, it's like you canceling this. If you had over four, oh cool, those fours cancel and my answer is five. And that's clearly not the answer. So you can't do that with trig. So that's why I wanted to do it this way and point out. Um, that mistake, people cancel things when they shouldn't. Because if you do something that's wrong mathematically, from there on, I, I mean, it doesn't matter. It's, it's wrong. So, so let's go back to see what I can do, what the right thing to do would be. I have cosecant squared minus 1, and then 1 plus cosecant theta. What, do you, what could you do to that top? What would you do if you had x squared minus 9? What could you do? You could factor. So factoring is another thing. So that would factor to cosecant minus 1 and cosecant of theta plus 1 over 1 plus cosecant of theta. And then I have this plus 1 kind of coming along for the ride. Now, am I able to do this? Yes, because I'm canceling the whole factor that's the same. So I can cancel those. I'm left with cosecant of theta minus 1 plus 1. And boom, boom, now those cancel because I'm doing addition. And I get down to cosecant of theta. You also need to not be lazy as, you, as you're starting this unit. Friends, the trig functions have to have the argument. You cannot write, write cosecant without cosecant theta or sine or whatever. All right, last one. What do you see to do? If you're not sure where to start, replace them with non-trig things, and it will probably be obvious. If I said, hey, mess with this, and mess with it some, what would you do? You'd say, oh, I'd foil it. Well, then let's do it with this trig function. So sine times sine, if sine squared, the outside would be plus sine. The inside would be negative sine. And then the last would be negative 1. And granted, you could probably have told that that's going to be uh, a squared minus b squared from the beginning, and that's fine. So I have sine squared minus 1. What would that be equal to if I have to get it with a single trig function? Well, once again, my identity that you memorized is sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So rearrange it so that it would say sine squared minus 1 on, the, on one side. And what would be on the other? Negative cosine squared of theta. And that's what you have to get down to. So that's what you'll be practicing tonight. Write neatly. Don't forget your thetas. Start memorizing the trig identities because they've got to be in your head forever. And peace out.